but connect to my mind. I have already given an example for the degenerate dimension. Then. I'm sorry about that. Actually, I realized now. It is a customer went to a store and bought 30 products, but he has only one bill for all the 30 products. So what we are talking about degenerate dimension is if you have a low level granular data. Now I'm catching the degenerate dimension properly. I'm sorry about that. Whatever I have explained before. So the degenerate dimension is each invoice has more than one item number, more than one, uh, more than one uh, uh, product code, more than one uh, promotion. So you have your invoice and each item is listed in such a way that you can connect that to the degenerated fact table and extract out of it. So that is degenerated dimension. So it plays the integral role in the fact table's primary key because when you say an order is processed, it is not just the order. The order has 100 visiting cards along with uh, 10 flyers and uh, 10 more mugs that uh, that is being raised by an office. Sometimes when you put the same order in Amazon, they will say items can be shipped separately. There will be a clause. The reason is not every item is manufactured by the same manufacturer. Your, your laptop bag will be shipping from a different place whereas your laptop itself comes from a different company. So that is what is degenerated dimension. The fact is one invoice is being purchased by a customer. He has the laptop along with a bag and an USB, uh, USB card with it. But if you look at it, USB is a different company, a laptop bag is a different company, laptop is a different company. But it is still one invoice. So you, you have to maintain them at the item level if you wanted to maintain the granularity then the degenerate dimension comes into picture. Now it makes sense very right? sorry there I, I confused a little bit but that is degenerate dimension. So at least one of you tell me did I confuse you if you want me to recap the degenerate dimension I can do it I apologize that I got confused there. Okay. So degenerate dimension if you look at it. Let us uh, look into the definition and I will explain. A dimension key such as a transaction number or invoice number, ticket number or bill of landing number that has no attributes and hence does not join to the actual dimension table is called as a degenerate dimension. What he is saying is at an invoice level under that you may have number of items in it. But if you are not able to join them to a particular dimension table because we are not going to maintain this dimension at that lowest level to the item and, uh, and also to the line of the product. That is what is a degenerate dimension. So degenerate dimensions are very common when the grain of a fact table represents a single transaction item or line item because the degenerated dimension represents a unique identifier of the parent. So degenerate dimension will be only at the level of invoice. It will not go to the line item. It will not have uh, whatever the products a customer bought at the individual level by each company. All it will have is the highest level. It will tie to only the invoice number. Right? So the degenerate dimension often play an integral role in the fact table's primary key. So instead of saying an invoice has 10 different products and each item has its own key, it will only give it as one invoice. So the granularity of a degenerated dimension is a little bit higher. That's what is uh, the ultimate thing. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, may maybe uh, it, if it is not quite clear even, you will understand it uh, actually when you implement. But just to try to uh, remember at a high level, if someone asks you what are the types of dimensions we have, answer is conformed dimensions, junk dimensions, degenerate dimensions and the final is role playing dimensions. Role playing is comes into picture when uh, the shipping information, that is a role playing dimension. Dimensions are often recycled for multiple applications within the same database. For instance, the date dimension can be used for a date of sale as well as a date of delivery or a date of hire. This is often referred as a role playing dimension because that is very much dependent, right? So it is kind of a fact that you require when is the order raised, but when is it processed, when is he delivered? There are three transactions for the same transaction that he has made online. So that is called as a role playing dimension. 
so it has a role to play whenever the time is changing it is more about if you go and track an item on usps they will say the item is screened and been dispatched from the store from louisiana and then it will say it is in transit the uh, third one is it arrived at san rafael and it went for a delivery out at 9:40 am today morning uh, for delivery that is a fourth status so that is called as a role playing dimension it is very particular to a uh, to a uh, kind of business all right then we are going to talk a little bit about types of facts an individual line item of a customer retail sales ticket as measured by a scanner device a line item on a bill received from a doctor we are talking about what is a fact an individual item of a customer retail sales ticket as measured by a scanner device is a fact a fact is an item is sold is a fact so if you go into a store departmental store he will have the scanner he will scan on each and every product you bought that is the individual line item for a customer in the retail, retail sale that is measured as a fact and the second one a line item or a bill received from a doctor a doctor bill will not have too many things under it he will put only one thing consultation in office 140 dollars 20 dollars is the copay that's it it is the bill which is also the line item which is a fact an individual boarding pass at a uh, to get into a flight is a fact a daily snapshot of inventory level for each product in a warehouse is a fact a monthly snapshot of each bank account is a fact but there are, you can divide these facts into three types additive semi additive non additive why we divide these into three facts on top you have seen the list of the possible facts right but in the list of possible facts you cannot sum up the numbers all the time you will have to be very careful while summing up the numbers the reason is in the footer percentages and ratios such as gross margin or non additive you cannot take a ratio and sum it up or you cannot take a gross margin and sum it up you will have to only sum it up with the net margin so the numerator and denominator should be stored in the fact table the ratio can be calculated in a data access tool for any slice of the fact table by remembering to calculate the ratio of the sums not the sums of the ratio so you cannot sum up the ratio but you can sum up uh, the reverse of it calculate the ratio of the sums so what is the ratio uh, saying ratio is like this 3 is to 4 for every three customers there are four products sold so what is the ratio for each customer each customer buying bu bu buying capacity is 1.3 so you cannot sum up one way you can sum up the other way as i told you the best example is you cannot sum up the units you can sum up the uh, you can sum up the the revenue generated the dollar amount but you cannot sum up the units because you would have bought 10 soaps and uh, 20 cigarette packets and 10 beers how can you sum up and say the the amount is a hundred dollars you cannot you will have to category by product so that those are non-additive facts semi-additive facts as he told the reverse of it is possible so you can add them but in a different way you can sum up the you can do a sum of ratios sorry you can do a ratio of sums but not sum of ratio that is a semi-additive whereas additive is strictly you can add it it is the revenue generated, final bill amount, dollar amount. You can add it anyway. So those are the three types of the facts we have guys. Now comes the important slowly changing dimensions. Before I go to that, are you okay? Is it is it uh, related to you? I mean, are you able to catch in your mind about slowly changing mind dimensions and the and the uh, sorry about the dimensions and the fact table? And then we'll go to the slowly changing dimensions, which is a very important thing. And if you understand slowly changing dimensions, you are the eligible person to design an ETL job for a uh, type 1 or type 2 or a type 3 dimension. You need to understand these three dimensions because if you are working on a data warehousing, you keep hearing whether you are designing a type 1 or a type 2. Mostly used to that. So any questions so far? Okay. 
Okay. So I go with the slowly changing dimensions. Slowly changing dimensions. It says they are going to change slowly because there are one more uh, one more kind of dimensions. They are rapidly changing dimensions. We will make the difference between them, but mostly in every data warehouse you will see slowly changing dimensions, not the uh, not the rapidly changing dimensions. Rapid changing dimensions anyhow are a little bit different. We'll we'll talk about it when time permits. So slowly changing dimensions type one. Methodology overrides old data with new data, therefore does not track historical data at all. This is most appropriate when correcting certain type of data errors such as the spellings of a name. Okay. Type one is no history. If you are trying to maintain a customer, only his current information will be maintained. My name has been changed across time. The day when I am born, I was named as I had no name actually. I had no name for three months, right? Because it is our custom, they will put a name after some time. And after I am born, after three months, I got a name Ganapati. And after some time, when it is in register, it was made as Ganapati Bhattula. After that, we, uh, when I worked in North India, people named me as Ganesh. When I moved to United States, I am named as G. So it took over time. For last 30 years, it is been changing. But if you ask anyone uh, whether you, if you design a database in a type one dimensional model, whether if it is a slowly changing dimension type one, it will have only current information. It will say his name is G. That's all. I don't know in history what is he is being called as. That is slowly changing dimension one. So. Only what he says is this is most appropriate when correcting certain types of data errors such as fillings of a name. So when you maintain it is a slowly changing dimension and try to update this only if there is a small name change you are going to correct it. But you are not maintaining the history. You will not maintain the corrected version and the wrong version of it in the same table. No, there will be only one and only one customer with the uh, uh, name Ganapati Bhattula with the same date of birth and uh, and the same place of view. So it will be only one person. That is time. Go ahead. It overwrites. The overwrites in sense is if Ganapati Bhattula already got an surrogate key, let us say, or a natural key, my customer number is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 is my customer number. So when, when an update happens to my address or when a name correction spelling happens, the the key doesn't change. I still have the number 1234. The rest of the information which is changed will be overwritten. Got it? So in this example, we are going to see a supplier code is a natural key and a supplier key is a surrogate key. There is a difference between a natural